Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much, Ms. Hogan, for shedding a light on how Facebook time and time again has put profit over people. Uh, when their own research found that more than 13% of teen girls say that Instagram made their thoughts of suicide worse, what did they do? They proposed Instagram for kids, which has now been put on pause because of public yeah. pressure. Uh, when they found out that their algorithms are fostering polarization, misinformation, and hate, um, that they allowed 99% of their violent contact to remain unchecked on their platform, including lead up to the January 6th insurrection. What did they do? They now, as we know, Mark Zuckerberg's going sailing and saying no apologies. I think the time has come for action, and I think you are the catalyst for that action. Um, you have said privacy legislation is not enough. I completely agree with you, but I think you know we have not done anything to update our privacy laws in this country, our federal privacy laws. Nothing zilch in any major way. Why? Because there are lobbyists around every single corner of this building that have been hired by the tech industry. Mm -hmm. We have done nothing when it comes to making the algorithms more transparent, allowing for the university research that you referred to. Why? Because Facebook and the other tech companies are throwing a bunch of money around this town and people are listening to them. We have done nothing significantly passed, although we are on a bipartisan basis working in the antitrust subcommittee to get something done on consolidation, mm -hmm. which you understand mm -hmm. allows the dominant platforms um, to control all this, like the bullies in the neighborhood, buy out the companies that maybe could have competed with them and added the bells and whistles. So the time for action is now. So I'll start, I'll start with something that I asked Facebook's head of safety when she testified before us last week. I asked her how they estimate the lifetime value of a user mm. for kids who start using their products before they turn 13. She evaded the question and said, that's not the way we think about it. Is that right, or is it your experience that Facebook estimates and, and puts a value on how much money they get from users in general? I'll get to kids in a second. Is that a motivating force for them? Um, based on what I saw in terms of allocation of integrity spending, so one of the things disclosed in the Wall Street Journal was that I believe it's like 87% of all the misinformation spending is spent on English, but only about like 9% of the users are English speakers. Um, it seems that, that Facebook invests more in users who make them more money, even though the danger may not be evenly distributed based on profitability. Does it make sense that having a younger person get hooked on social media um, at a young age mm -hmm. makes them more profitable over the long term as they have a life ahead of them? Facebook's internal documents talk about the importance of getting younger users, for example, tweens, onto Instagram, like Instagram kids, because they need to have, um, like, they know that children bring their parents online and things like that. And so mm -hmm. they understand the value of younger users for the, the long term success of Facebook. Facebook reported advertising revenue to be $51.58 per user oh, wow. last quarter in the US and Canada. Uh, when I asked Ms. Davis how much of that came from Instagram users under 18, she wouldn't say. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that teens are profitable for their company? I would assume so, based on advertising for things like television. Uh, you get much substantially higher advertising rates for customers who don't yet have preferences or habits. And so I'm, I'm sure they are some of the more profitable users on Facebook, but I do not work directly on that. Mm -hmm. Another major issue that's come out of this, uh, eating disorders. Mm. Uh, studies have found that eating disorders actually have the highest mortality rate of any mental illness um, for women. Um, and I led a bill on this with Senators Capito and Baldwin uh, that we passed into law. And I'm concerned that this algorithms that they have pushes outrageous content um, mm -hmm promoting anorexia and the like. I know it's personal to you. Uh, do you think that their algorithms push some of this content to young <coughs> girls? Facebook knows that their the, the engagement-based ranking, the way that they pick the content in Instagram for young users, for all users, um, amplifies preferences. And they have done something called a proactive, a proactive incident response, where they, they take things that they've heard, for example, like, uh, can you be led by the algorithms to anorexia content? And they have literally recreated that experiment themselves and confirmed, yes, this, this happens to people. So mm -hmm. Facebook knows that they, are, that they are leading young users to anorexia content. 
Uh, do you think they are deliberately designing their product to be addictive beyond even that content? Uh, Facebook has a long history of having a successful um, and very effective um, growth division um, where they take little tiny tweaks and they constantly, constantly, constantly are trying to optimize it to grow. Um, th those kinds of stickiness could be cons construed as things that facilitate addiction. Right. Last thing I'll ask is we've seen this same kind of content in the political world. You brought up other countries mm -hmm. and what's been happening there. On 60 Minutes, you said that Facebook implemented safeguards to reduce misinformation ahead of the 2020 election, but turned off those safeguards right after the election. Um, and you know that the insurrection occurred January 6th. Do you think that Facebook turned off the safeguards because they were costing the company money, because it was reducing profits? Facebook has been emphasizing a false choice. They've said uh, the safeguards that were in place before the election impl uh, implicated free speech. The choices that were happening on the platform were really about how reactive and twitchy was the platform, right? Like how viral was the platform? And Facebook changed those safety defaults in the run up to the election because they knew they were dangerous. And because they wanted that growth back, they wanted the acceleration of the platform back after the election, they, re they returned to their original defaults.